Hey everybody, um, I'm driving back from an emergency dental appointment, so obviously I wasn't able to be in my studio at 8.30 uh, in order to do the wisdom meditation. I hope what I'm doing right now is legal <laughs> because uh, I'm hands-free, so I think I'm legal. You know, you can't hold your phone in Virginia anymore, and I wouldn't want to do that anyway, but since I've now got a, a, uh, a mount for my telephone, I can at least talk to you all. So look, here's what I'm going to do. We're going to come back to, because obviously I can't read the Bible while I'm driving this way. That would not be wise. Talk about a wisdom meditation. I know at least that much. I am that wise. But I, I do want to talk about a couple of things that, that are going on while I'm here. We'll, we'll just end it uh, when my drive ends. And, uh, and then I'll come back to the word tomorrow, but but I'm glad at least I've got the technology to be able to talk to you and not uh, not have you sitting there maybe wondering, well, what, what's going on? It's 8.30, there's no E.W. Jackson. Um, look, this stuff that's going on right now in our country with this division is a very, very dangerous situation. Um, and I've been spending a lot of time thinking and praying about this. And I've got a couple of reflections on it. You know, the Bible says, do not remove the ancient landmarks that your father have set, your fathers have set. And really ancient landmarks there doesn't refer to physical objects. It refers to essential principles. In other words, don't remove the ideals that allowed you to get where you are. There's an old saying, um, I think that comes out of the South, don't forget the bridge that brought you over. And unfortunately, as we've seen the rise coming primarily, I'm convinced from our our intellectual community, and I'm not anti-intellectual, I mean, my goodness, I'm a, I'm a graduate of Harvard Law School, I read a lot. Uh, I don't just read the Bible, I read all kinds of materials, I'm interested, I'm, I'm intellectually curious, I'm interested in a lot of different things. But out of our intellectual community, um, the people who, who read and study and research and write for a living has come this romanticism with Marxism. And even though we don't call it that anymore, uh, I think because Antonio Gramsci's insights about taking over a culture without a, a violent revolution by supplanting its cultural hegemony and replacing principles and ideals with something different than what people have believed and that which holds a free society together. And I think we see that very thing happening. And you know, I hear a lot of, well, you know, on the extreme right and the extreme left and this, that, and the other, but, but there are two things that come to mind for me. I am no more conservative today than I was 40 years ago no more conservative and yet I am classed as far right what happened well what happened is that the left has discarded the ancient landmarks which our fathers have set they have attacked and undermined faith with moral and cultural and spiritual relativism uh, rather than they in fact they frankly refuse to acknowledge the Christian underpinnings of our culture the Judeo-Christian nature of our, our foundational principles, they don't, they, don't, they don't believe in that, they don't accept that. So they've attacked that. Um, the church has always believed in marriage as a union between one man and one woman. I mean, I, there, there are these, of course, these, um, well, these, these theological liberals who just frankly don't believe in anything. They just, you know, that what, what they call themselves Christians, like this guy Ralph Warnock, I mean Raphael Warnock, they call themselves Christians, but they're not Christians. They're not Christians by any reasonable definition because they deny the supernatural power of God to transform lives. And they think that Christianity is simply a matter of accepting a set of ideals. And um, now I don't want you all to see my bad hat, driving habits here. <laughs> so. 
the degree, degree to which I can get irritated when people are behaving badly on the road. But at any rate, they, they discard all of that. They, they, all of that is thrown out the window. Uh, and right now, to be a Bible-believing Christian is by definition to be a, uh, a, 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 a member of the far right. You know, I'm convinced that Fox News doesn't call on me the way they used to because of my position on homosexuality. And the homosexual community has got so much influence that they get to define you to the mainstream media. You know, I've seen mainstream reporters um, question me about things that they read in Right Wing Watch. And I knew they read them in Right Wing Watch because I knew Right Wing Watch was where, was where it was said. And they'll come to me. So that means they're feeding off of the far left and if our left is who defines us, we conservatives, Bible-believing Christians, they define us as far right. I'm no more pro-life than I was then. I'm no more pro-family than I was 40 years ago. My views on Israel hasn't ch haven't changed from 40 years ago. My views on economics haven't changed from 40 years ago. Nothing has changed. But 40 years ago, I was mainstream, but now I'm far right. And my point in saying all that is this, you can't keep changing the goalpost and then say to the people who are still trying to kick the same field goal, you have left the game, you have left the field, you are no longer playing by the rules. Because basically they keep changing the rules. And, and when you change the rules and you say, not only can you not win, but you can't even play. In other words, we need to silence you. We need to stop you. We need to destroy you because you are a bad person. And you're saying, well, wait, wait, wait. I've, I've been playing this game, and you all understand I'm using that metaphorically, but I've been on this field for all these years, and now suddenly the way I play is wrong. Well, that's because the people who are controlling the game are changing the rules right before our very eyes. And the, and the referees, like the mainstream media and, and others, are going along with the changes of rules and in fact supporting the changes of rules and then redefining everybody. So, so for example, now to be a man who thinks you are a woman is to be a very desirable person. To be a man who believes that there are males and females and that's it, that's all, there's no other gender, is to be a right winger. I mean, think about that. I mean, think about that that by definition, if you believe that there are two genders, male and female, you are a far right winger. Now, is th that's nuts. That is utterly crazy. And so the, the rules, the parameters have been changed to make it appear that those of us who are holding fast to age-old landmarks that our father set are bad people, dangerous people, far-right people. You know, you do, do you notice you never hear the mainstream media refer to um, these leftists as far left or even as left. They don't. I mean, CNN is a far-left network. ABC, NBC, CBS, they're all out on the left. MSNBC is completely, I, I, it doesn't even pay to, I mean, you can't even define them as far left. And many of these people are imbued with Marxist ideas. So, so faith is under attack, family is under attack with all this gender bending stuff. And here again, I don't think any differently about sexual morality than I did 40 years ago, but suddenly my views are, are crazy. They're way out there. I believe that homosexuality was sin 40 years ago. I believe it today. Um, I don't believe anything differently about freedom that I did then. 40 years ago, everyone would have agreed with me when I said as, as, uh, as used to be common and, and, and agreed upon as a basic cultural principle, I may not agree with what you say, but I will defend to the death your right to say it. And then now we're in a culture where that viewpoint, oh, you, you're, you're, you, you, you're allowing hate speech. 
Speech is speech. I just don't believe in punishing people for what they say. As egregious as it is, unless the person says, I'm going to kill you and here's my gun and, and I'm going to do it. You know, I mean, if it's an imminent threat, obviously that's something different. You can't yell fire in a crowded theater. I understand that. But, to, but look, for somebody to say, I hate E.W. Jackson's guts and I wish he'd shut his mouth. I wish he'd, you know, I, I wish E.W. Jackson would die. Folks, as far as I'm concerned, it's still just speech. And a person's got a right to say that. I don't like it. I wish they didn't feel that way about me. But I defend their right to think that because when I say, well, you know, these people are idiots. They're crazy. They are completely off the reservation. They have gone insane. They are morally bankrupt. They're demonic. I don't want anybody to tell them, oh, that's hate speech. You can't say that. But that's, that's ethic is gone. We see with big tech, it's gone. Now, here, here's, here's what I really want to get to. So when they say that the country is divided, the country is divided because there are people who have remained in exactly the same place that we've been for a half a century, or for those who, you know, have been around longer, a century. The left has changed the rules. They've redefined our culture. They've redefined the political spectrum and they've stepped so far back to the left, so far into the abyss, so far into darkness, but because they're surrounded by people who affirm their crazy views, the, 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 the colleges, the universities, the mainstream media, the journalists, for the most part, I mean, there are exceptions, of course. I mean, you got Newsmax and you got, I think it's called uh, One America News. And um, and you've got obviously a lot of bloggers, and I mean at this point I I'm becoming part of of the news stream now because I'm constantly putting out information. But let's face it, the gig the giants, big tech, and these other people are all marching to the beat of the same drummer. And 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 folks, I am disturbed by the fact that Republicans and conservatives won't call this for what it is. It is Marxist. It is godless. They're the radicals. They're the ones creating the division. You know, I used to do a program many years ago. I don't think I've ever shared this with you all. But I used to do a program called Jackson and Jerkowitz. I did it on what's now uh, WHDH at that time. Boston had two major talk stations, WRKO and WHDH. Howie Carr, uh, who if you follow talk radio at all, Howie Carr, is the guy who took over from uh, Jackson and Jerkowitz. When we left, he came in and, and his show was gone on since then. But it was a liberal conservative talk show. I was a conservative. Uh, Mark Jerkowitz was a liberal. Mark Jerkowitz went on to be the ombudsman, I think for the Washington Post or something like that. I don't know where Mark is now. But you know, Mark and I were actually friends and we didn't agree about almost anything. You know, I'm a conservative, Protestant minister. Mark was basically a non-believing Jewish man. And, and we didn't agree on almost anything, but we came to like each other. We came to be friends and we could talk about any issue. And it wasn't, he wanted to kill me and I wanted to kill him. But since that time, the Mark Jerkowitzes of the world, and Mark, if you're out there, God bless you, buddy. But the Mark Jerkowitzes of the world the liberals have gone so far left. And look, not only that, but then point back at those who have not moved and said, well, even though I believed in marriage 40 years ago and I believe in marriage now, 40 years ago I was mainstream. Oh, you're dangerous. You're dangerous. You're hateful. You're far right. Because see, they can do that because they get to define the terms because they have all these institutions around them that will justify their crazy views. I'm not causing the division. I'm simply pointing out what's wrong and I'm not moving. And I think they want to tie a rope around us and, and, and drag us uh, to their perspective or drag us to death. I mean, I mean that metaphorically, but just basically destroy us so marginalize us, so 
so um, slander us, so vilify us that we become untouchable. Now I say that because that's exactly what they're doing to President Trump now. They're, they're turning him into a monster, into persona non grata. I mean, this man's gonna have a hard time doing business when he leaves the White House because they have turned him into the supreme villain. Um, now, let me add one other thing. The investigation so far have discovered some people who were at the, the Capitol and stormed the Capitol as white supremacists, okay? That does not surprise me. I'm, I'm, I'm not happy about that, obviously, to the extent that white supremacists embed themselves in uh, the Trump movement or in the people who support President Trump. It's disappointing to me. I don't like it. Uh, I don't like white supremacy. I don't like any kind of, of racial or ethnic supremacy. And as I've just explained before, we've seen it all over the world and it comes in all kinds of, of guises and race is just one of them. I mean, it's, it's just tribalism. And I don't like it, not one bit. But the people I know, the people I'm associated with are not white supremacists. They're Christians, they love God, they love this country. They believe that President Trump has expressed the concerns that they've had for many, many years and have had no champion to give voice to those concerns. And I don't blame President Trump because some white supremacists did something heinous by attacking the, the Capitol. I, I was wondering who the guy was with this iconic picture walking around flying the Confederate flag but President Trump's made clear there's one flag that he, he's committed to that he honors, that's the American flag. So that guy did not represent Trump and he did not represent those who support Trump. But, but, let me add this caveat. Oh, and by the way, there are black supremacists. There are people who really want, when you see somebody commanding telling a white person, get on your knees and apologize to me, to me, that's black supremacy. That's not seeking, that's not seeking reconciliation. That's not seeking unity in our country. That's seeking to subjugate people. That's, that's vengeance. That's saying, now you owe me. That person, there's no person alive today who ever owned a slave. There's no person alive today who, uh, well, there probably still are people alive, obviously, but they're very, very elderly, who participated in the Jim Crow era. And a lot of people have never done anything wrong to, to any person uh, who happens to be black or Hispanic or, or what the left describes as people of color. Uh, as I've said many times, everybody has color. Get a grip, get a, get a clue, get a revelation. Everybody has color. That's just the way of dividing people, everybody else against anybody who's of European ancestry. That's all that is. Because Europeans have color too. Everybody has color. But if you keep telling people you're no good, you're a white supremacist, you are a beneficiary of white privilege, you are, uh, you are a person of unconscious bias, you are racist even if you don't know it. You, you, you tell the whole population that they're all villains, that they're all inheritors of a white racist, white supremacist society, and they're perpetuators of it. Don't you know there are gonna be some people on the fringe who will take that as a battle cry? Now the people I know don't, they, they know that the left is stupid when they say all this dumb stuff, and they don't take that to heart, and they don't see themselves as, well, I'm gonna be a white supremacist because yeah, they, they're going to put us white people down because they, they realize what I realize. They're ultimately in the sight of God. There's no white people or black people or Hispanic people. We're all just human beings. All in need of the same redemption. All in need of the same cleansing from our sin. All flawed. All imperfect. All in need of a savior. But if you keep telling people that they are the problem, you don't expect that they're going to be some crazies, some people already inclined toward 
violent behavior who are going to take that and say, well, you know what? If they hate me, I hate them too. You know what? They 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 say all oh, we we all white people are bad. Okay, fine. Well, you know what? We just we're going to show them just how bad we are. In other words, rather than trying to bring us together, rather than marginalizing people who think have these thoughts about other people based on skin color, what the left is doing, what Joe Biden did when he came away from it, it been Black Lives Matter. They would have been treated differently is they are constantly stoking the flames of racial division and then point at Donald Trump and point at conservatives and say, we are fostering division. But this, it, it's I'll tell you, it's disgusting because there's not a conservative that I know whose vision for America is not one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Every single one of them that I know, that's their perspective. That's the way they think. And it's the left that thinks somehow, I don't know what they think they're gonna do. Uh, I guess you gotta get rid of all the white working class people who aren't progressives, I guess. I don't know what, I, I, I don't know. They just, but they keep beating that drum and beating that drum and beating that drum. And then they're shocked when there are people who rise up and say, well, then we're gonna show you how white we are. I mean, what, what was the reaction of, of black people in the 60s after having been um, emasculated and disenfranchised and, and, uh, and denigrated and stereotyped? What did you hear? Black power, black power. What did you hear? Say it loud, I'm black and I'm proud. Proud boys. I mean, and I'm not saying any of that is right. Oh, and black is beautiful. I'm not saying any of that is right. It's obviously it's understandable on the part of black folks because after two and a half centuries or more of being told that you are inherently inferior, that is an understandable reaction but the problem is that it's not real because everybody's beautiful every brown is beautiful white is if you want to use the colors white is beautiful yellow is beautiful god made us all and we're all beautiful in his sight but but here again it's understandable but when you keep pushing people, and I know people say, well, yeah, but, but white people, black people can't be racist. Only white people can be racist. That's another one of these Marxist concoctions of the left. That's like saying the proletariat can't oppress the bourgeoisie. The bourgeoisie can only oppress the proletariat because the proletariat don't have the power to oppress the bourgeoisie. It's, that's all it is. It's the same thing. It's just put in racial terms because racial division works better than class division in America. Now, I've got some advice for the left. They better stop looking at this country and the world in racial terms and start thinking and talking about all Americans and how we can bring all Americans together based upon a shared set of values. And see, that's part of their problem. They rejected the shared set of values that we once had. You know, my father taught me, nobody owes you anything, son. You have to work for what you want. You got to go out there and do it. You got to go out there and make it happen. And now people are told, no, you were oppressed. You're a victim. You're entitled. We got to give you this. You need reparations, blah, blah, blah. And, 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 and basically, you people over here are the ancestors of those people. And you got to give these people because they're the, they're the ancestors of those people. And, and, and they're owed. I mean, that's, that's folks. I, I, I read one writer, in fact, Stephen Phillips in this book, Browns in the White, said that black people deserve reparations for another two and a half centuries to make up for the two and a half centuries of slavery and Jim Crow. Now, we're supposed to live under the yoke of that for two and a half centuries? It, it's, it, it's just, if, if, look, if the left wants a civil war, 
they are going about it the right way. That's what I want to get to here. If they want a civil war, they're going about it the right way. If you want our country to be at peace, it's time to stop using every opportunity that you have to stoke the flames of racial division and racial distinction and start talking about Americans and what Americans need and what Americans want. I mean, it was completely gratuitous for Joe Biden to say that if the protesters at the Capitol had been Black Lives Matter, they would have been treated differently. I mean, it had nothing to do with anything, but he just had to throw that bomb in there just to get everybody stirred up. Yeah, that's true, that's right. Yeah, black people would have been treated differently. I mean, a woman was killed. What? A woman was shot in the face. What, what, what more do they want? And she happened to be white. I mean, what is it? Well, yeah, but if they if they'd have been black, they would have killed two women. I mean, I, you know, folks, I love this country, and we've got this is the most wonderful experiment in human liberty that has ever been done. And I see people who are basically crushing it under the weight of their ambition to have power. You know, I'm convinced that what the left wants in our country is for us to be a one party state and that only Democrats can be president and only Democrats can control legislatures and only Democrats can can control uh, um, uh, state houses and and governorships because they really believe that they're the elites with all the answers and the rest of us just need to shut up and live under their subjugation, live under their rule. Because if they, we do that, we're going to find that we, we'll have a utopia. Um, I would say this about Republicans. Republicans have better start calling this stuff out. And Republicans have better start pointing out the Marxist influence that has infected the Democrat Party. Republicans better start pointing out the lies and the and the absurdity of some of the things that these Democrats are promoting. I heard, um, uh, what's the guy uh, up in Connecticut? I think it's Bloom, um, Senator Rich. It was Richard Bloom. I forget his first name, but the guy who lied when he was running for U.S. Senate many years ago and said that he had seen combat in Vietnam and talked about coming back from combat in Vietnam. And he never went to Vietnam, which to me is one of the most despicable things a human being can do to take credit for the sacrifices and the suffering of those who put their lives on the line in behalf of this country to take that upon yourself so that you can fulfill your own selfish ambitions. I will never have any respect for that man. I mean, I forgive him as a Christian, but as far as having respect for anything he's got to say, I don't want to hear it. And he just recently said, well, Republicans want unity. We can have unity. Vote to convict President Trump. Well, maybe people ought to vote to convict you for being a, a lying weasel who, who actually took credit for combat that you never saw. How about that? I and mean, we can play that game all day long. And we don't need to convict President Trump. What You know what we need to do right now? We need to focus on... The, three things getting our election system straightened out because folks I'm looking to the future now I'm looking to the future whether we like it or not President Trump is not going to be president of the United States come January 20th now, I know some of you are holding out hope that that can still happen uh, I, can, I can tell you barring uh, a, a divine intervention beyond anything we can imagine it's not going to happen Joe Biden is going to be next president of the United States and Kamala Harris is going to be vice president of the United States. Just deal with it. That's what's going to happen. Okay. But that doesn't leave us in a hopeless situation. We've got to look to the future. We got to get our, get our election system straightened out. We got to make sure that we can have confidence in our elections. And we can do that because there are state legislatures across this country who are Republican and conservative and control the state uh, state houses, and they can they can make the uh, the changes and the reforms that are needed so that everybody has confidence that our elections are being carried out lawfully and appropriately, 
and the counts that we come up with are, are, are accurate. <clears throat> we gotta have voter ID. We've gotta check signatures for those few people who can do mail-in ballots. And mail-in ballots, I don't have a problem with mail-in ballots for people who are disabled, for people who simply can't get out, they can't get to the polls. Um, I'm willing to allow that, but that should be few and far between. And everything else, you gotta go and vote. You can vote absentee, but you gotta go in person and vote. And everybody else, vote on election day. I, I don't believe in these Sunday voting trips by churches because to me, that's just a formula for machine politics and telling everybody, okay, everybody go down. It's like a bunch of lemmings. Everybody go down, vote for the, the, the baby killing Democrat, vote for the atheist, vote for the person who hates Israel, vote for the person who is redefining family, vote for the homosexual, vote for the lesbian, vote for the transgender. I know you're Christians, but don't, don't ignore that because these are the people who are gonna do something with the poor and they're gonna do something with black folks and they're gonna do something with Hispanic folks. So ignore their, 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 their complete degeneracy and depravity and immorality, just vote for them anyway. Because that's obviously what Raphael Warnock would tell this congregation. Because he's one of those depraved people. And everybody voted for him. A lot of people voted for him, obviously. So, vote on election day. Vote on election day. Instead of all this early voting stuff that allows for too many shenanigans. And Republicans who control these state houses can make these changes. And they need to. That's number one. Number two, we need to, we need to double down on our First Amendment liberty and realize that big tech is not, these are not just private companies. These are companies operating under color of law. These are companies operating under the 1996 Communications Act, Section 230, which gives them, them uh, protection against liability because they call themselves platforms, neutral platforms that allow for all speech. That's a lie, they're not. I told you, I've been banned from Twitter for 18 months, more than that now, I think it's almost two years. All because I said after the Sri Lankan attack by Muslims on Christians worshiping God on a Sunday and the, the, the radical uh, is Islamists, the Islamists attacked them, killed many Christians. And some guy by the name of Andy Fox said, well, the Christians weren't evangelizing properly and basically suggesting that their evangelistic texts, evangelism techniques were dishonest or misleading or whatever. I mean, so he had some issue with it. And I simply responded and said, you can't compare evangelistic techniques that you don't like with killing people. I said, Christians are not killing people. Muslims are doing that. They took me off. See, I really believe they took me off because of my views on homosexuality, but that was the excuse that they used because that was innocuous. I mean, it was obvious, it was true. It was Muslims doing the killing. I mean, I don't, the particular Muslims, not all Muslims, but particular Muslims, but that was hardly hate speech. They took me down, they said, you can appeal it, I appealed it, and never heard from them again. These people are now behaving like states, and they're big enough that they should really have ascribed to them the status of kind of many states and the fact that they are mouthpieces for the Democrat party and for this administration now means even more so that they're operating under color of state law and they really are capable of significantly diminishing the First Amendment liberties of all Americans and they've gotta be broken up. They gotta be broken up. And I know this administration is not gonna do that, but we gotta get somebody in there who will, who will break them up. And, and we've got to, they, they can't have Section 230 anymore protection, Section 230 protection. From now on, they've got to be sued. They've got to be sued. I've thought long and hard about suing Twitter myself, but, but I'm busy doing other things. I don't know whether I want to take my time up for that dribble. Um, as now we've seen they, 75 million followers and they take the president down. I mean, these people are wicked. They're evil. They're evil. And you can have up, I saw a post um, with a hashtag, assassinate Trump. That, that's okay. But my little comment about Muslims killing people in Sri Lanka, oh, got to get rid of that. Got to get rid of him. So we got to restore First Amendment liberties in this country. And we got to come back to that mantra that says, I may not agree with what you say, 
but I will defend to the death your right to say it. And I mean that, folks. I think that's the only way to have a free society. Now, here again, you can't threaten people and, you know, take, take imminent threats against people. And, and obviously, if folks are inciting violence, and, and that really is an imminent and real thing. I mean, somebody comes on and says, you know what? We ought to, we ought to storm the, the Capitol. Well, so what? I don't say we don't monitor things like that to determine whether people, well, somebody who arrived at the Capitol had, um, I, I forget how many rounds of ammunition. I don't even know where they got the ammunition. There's an ammunition shortage right now. They must've been storing it up for a long time. I wish I had been doing that because man, ammunition is hard to find these days. It really is. It's, I, believe me, I've been looking. It's very, very hard to find. I shoot a lot and you just can't, you can't find it. So some idiot goes with, you know, uh, an AR-15 and, and a couple thousand rounds of ammunition to the Capitol, okay. And and that person has been making threats and we're gonna, we're gonna take over, we're gonna storm the Capitol, we're gonna kill this one and kill that. All right, then you gotta take that seriously. That person is actually taking action to fulfill the stupid thing he or she has said. You can't threaten the President of the United States, but even that Twitter hasn't taken down. We Look, we have gotta be very, 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 very careful in this country that we don't ever slip into punishing people because of what they say or think. We punish people in this country for what they do against the law, what they do to hurt persons and to harm property. But we don't punish people simply for what they say and what they think. And, and folks, I, I'm very, look, I, I'm, I'm hardcore about this because I know if we start doing it with them, guess who's next? Us, me. Because there are a lot of things I say that I read it on online pretty much every day that people don't like. If I don't protect the free speech rights of those whose speech I don't like, then who's going to protect the free speech rights of myself, of you? So that's the second thing we got to do. And folks... The third thing we got to do is we have got to restore the Judeo-Christian values and ethics that make this country great. We've got to restore it. We, we, that, we've got to establish that as the norm. That's why I speak so vehemently and boldly because I realize if you merely mouth this, people don't get it. If you just go, well, you know, I mean, everybody, we're... Uh, I'm okay, you're okay, and I may not agree with you, but because the problem is conservatives keep backing up, backing up, backing up, giving more and more and more territory, and they keep taking more and more territory, and one day you look up and you're backed into a corner, and you've got no choice but to fight. And I don't ever want to see that happen in our country. I want to see us be a country of peace, and prosperity and opportunity and hope and unity. Hey, why can't we be unified around love for our country? But the left won't even give you that. Oh, that's racist, that's xenophobic, that's, that's you know, what? Get liberal or conservative, you don't love America? You live here? This is your home, this is your country, this is where your family is? You don't love this country, you hate it because you think it's racist and sexist and homophobic and Islamophobic and all. You know, just go somewhere else. My goodness. If we can't unify around love of country, I, I don't know what hope there is. So, well, I said that's the third thing, but it's related to, to, to a bigger point, which is this. We cannot allow the racial demagoguery of the left to make minorities in this country, people of African ancestry, people of Hispanic ancestry, which by the way, people of Hispanic ancestry, going back before South America or going back before Mexico or Central America, many of them have European ancestry. So people in South America, people we call Hispanic, they are, they are uh, descendants uh, of aboriginals. In other words, uh, the Indians who lived in that those areas, 
They are descendants of the Africans who came to that continent as slaves. Uh, they are ancestors of Europeans, uh, sp primarily Spanish um, Europeans who came to the country and settled, uh, came to that continent and settled much of it. So you've got all kinds of, if you will, racial mix there, but we use Hispanic. I mean, most of the people in Puerto Rico, most Hispanics in Puerto Rico are descendants of the Spanish and are therefore European. So see here again, all this, this, this racial and ethnic stuff, it's all confused anyway. But we can't allow people, Asians, the left is going after Asians now. Uh, first generation Asians who escaped communism. They came here from China. They came here from Vietnam. They came here from Cambodia. They know what communism is. They know what the left wants to do. And they hate it. And those people are not Democrats. But one, two generations down the road where all of that is forgotten, and the, and, and the Democrats come along and say, hey, the white people hate you. America's a racist country. America's white supremacist. You better side with us because we're the only ones who are gonna protect you from those bad white people and all that pervasive racism that rules America. We better answer that. We better answer that. We better answer that. We better secure our First Amendment rights. We better make sure that our elections are, are sound and, and operate with integrity. And we need to restore the Judeo-Christian principles and values that unite us across all racial and cultural lines and give an answer and a hope and a vision to the people out there who are being corralled by the likes of Stacey Abrams and, and Barack Obama and Michelle Obama and Oprah Winfrey and all these leftists out there who have made it beyond their wildest dreams and are busy selling to everyone else that you can't make it because you're black, you can't make it because you're Hispanic, you can't make it because you're Mexican, you can't make it because you're Asian. And my goodness gracious, Asians, generally speaking, score higher, have higher income than pretty much any demographic group in this country other than, the, uh, other than Jews. I mean, those are just demographic facts. Anybody can make it in this country. It just depends on what values you, you choose to, to, to assimilate, what values you choose to embrace. And if you choose to embrace victimization and, and, and despair and hopelessness and they won't let me, yeah, you can be a, a, a no count nothing. Or you can, you can say, you know what? I live in the greatest nation on earth. There is more freedom and opportunity here than any place else on the face of the earth. That's why so many people are trying to get into this country and I'd be a fool not to make the most of it. So instead of being out there weeping and moaning and whining about what they won't let you do, taking advantage of the opportunities that are available to you. And how about we all unify around that? Let's, ever, let's all of us, Americans of whatever background, let's be the very best we can be. Let's treat our neighbors right. Let's, let's be productive. Let's work hard. Let's never ask anybody to do for us what we should, should do for ourselves. Let's, let's uphold our American flag. Let's uphold the wonderful constitution that's been the most successful governing document in the history of mankind. Let's not shred it, let's uphold it. Let's, 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 we're, let's revere it and let's accept it for the fact that it has been successful and twisting it and turning it and making it say things that it doesn't say only serve to undermine it. Well, we're gonna come back to the Gospel of John, but like I said, I had something to do and, and couldn't do that, but I wanted to not leave you all in the lurch, not leave you wondering uh, was it, whether I was gonna come on. So um, folks, don't lose heart, don't despair, don't give up. I'm certainly not. I'm certainly not. Oh, by the way, some of you have been asking me, see why I got my America sweatshirt on. Have they been asking me about where I got this? You know where I got this sweatshirt? I got this sweatshirt at the Baltimore airport because I fly a lot and, and I pass through Baltimore airport. They've got, I think it's called the America store. I think it's called the America store. And they've got all kinds of patriotic shirts and 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 um, memorabilia and and all kinds of things you know cups and you name it 
they got a lot of stuff. I saw this shirt there and I thought, man, I like that. I, I gotta have that. So that's where I bought it. Uh, I think it's called the America Store. Uh, they've got more than one store and I'm sure you can order stuff online, but I got it at that store. So if you're ever passing through the Baltimore, um, what's it, BWI, uh, Washington, Baltimore Airport, or Washington, Baltimore, Washington Airport, BWI. But if you're ever passing through there, it's on the it's on the first floor, uh, right there where all the stores are and all the little shops are, and it's it's toward the end, um, heading toward gates, the A gates. Yeah, I've been there enough. That heading toward the A gates, as you're heading toward the A gates on the left hand side. So that's where I got this. If you want if you want to get one, go online, check them out. They've got all kinds of stuff there. But look, I've got a lot of patriotic stuff myself. I've got stand of uh, the Stand America store. And so you can go on our website, standamerica.us, and uh, click on Stand Store, and you can find some stuff there. We got, you know, Stand for America, uh, and well, we got all kinds of stuff. And you know what? Actually, because I'm broadcasting through our, this you're probably seeing that backwards, aren't you? So I've got to figure out. Yeah, you're seeing that backwards. So I got to figure out how to, because I'm broadcasting now through a new system. I got to figure out how to make this read properly so that you see this not like you're looking in a mirror but you see it like you're looking straight at me so well at any rate folks i love you i love this country we love the lord he's still on the throne no matter what happens and by the way let me tell you something two years from now is going to be a reckoning i i i, I believe this with all my heart two years from now republicans are going to take over the republicans are going to take over the congress republicans are going to take back the senate and four years from now, Republicans are going to take back the White House. We do those three things. We secure our First Amendment rights. We get the election straightened out. And we, we stop allowing these minorities to be indoctrinated and brainwashed with this Marxist leftist nonsense and give them an answer full of hope and opportunity and prosperity for themselves and their children for the future. And believe me, America is going to be just fine. And maybe this has been an opportunity for us to double down and realize we didn't get here overnight and we're not going to solve these problems overnight. But I'll tell you what, we're certainly never going to quit because if we quit, we lose. And we cannot be defeated if we will not quit because we are on God's side. God bless everybody. I'm home. Got to go.